You are awoken by the sound of an angry man pounding on your door. Time to get up, bitches! Let me tell you about Thog the Barbarian, this character I play. He accidentally zombified the entire Dark Sun campaign setting, and the people you're talking to have no idea what you're talking about, but you will know that it was the most awesome thing that ever happened. Hello, I am Chandler Walpole, and I am the DM, or Dungeon Master. My name is Elizabeth McMichael, I go by Liz, and my character is named Maya. Krakus, uh, The Burning, specifically, is his title. I'm Ashton, and I play a human clerk. It's the kind of game where it's like, it's not just a normal board game or um, a card game where you follow specific rules and there's always a certain kind of outcome. In Dungeons and Dragons, anything can happen. You can do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> you really can. Um, there have been campaigns where I've done everything from yak rustling, because we were in the Arctic, um, to uh, skydiving out off a pelican, a giant pelican, and uh, everything in between. Uh, there is absolutely anything you can do with a great group of people. In Dungeons & Dragons, you start off by making a character sheet. This character sheet has all of your stats, your equipment, and all of the other things that you need to play the game. Everyone give me a constitution save. There's strength, constitution, dexterity, wisdom, intelligence, and charisma. I just needed to make sure I could remember all of them off the top of my head. So strength is your ability to crush a tomato. Your constitution is your ability to survive eating a rotten tomato. Your dexterity is your ability to dodge a tomato being thrown at you. Intelligence is knowing a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing a tomato does not go in a fruit salad. And charisma is being able to sell a tomato-based fruit salad. You then draw a board. This board can be whatever the setting is and is drawn by the dungeon master. Then you place your miniature on the board and decide what you want to do. From there, the possibilities are endless. Is the door outside, like, leading out to the, the, the courtyard area, is that locked? No. Okay, I very stealthily push it open. God, we need a wizard. <laughs> I get a 20... Oh, God, that. 21 stealth. The guard who's guarding the door does not notice, but there is a guard guarding the door. So how do you do something? I'm glad you asked. A simple example is, I want to hit that goblin. What you do is, you first decide what you want to do. So, in this case, I want to hit that goblin with my axe. And then you will roll the 20-sided die, the, the big, the important one. Um, or, go back. Dice are called D however many sides they have. But you also have D4s, you have the D6s, you have D8s, D10s, D12s, and the all-important D20. And the 20-sided die is your life, your death, your luck, your fate, all that stuff. The other dice tend to be how sort of weapon rolls, that sort of thing. And you'll take whatever roll you get and um, add a certain number of modifiers. For example, if I want to hit a goblin with my axe, my strength is what modifies that, so I hit a little harder if I have a high strength score. And then you get a number, in this case, 17 and then you compare it against how hard it is to do the thing that you just tried to do. In this case, it requires a 12 or better to hit the goblin, so I whacked it in the head with my sword. <laughs> well, you know how I was talking about how you roll a 20-sided die for pretty much any time you try to do something. You have what's called a critical hit, which is where you roll a 20 on a 20-sided die. So you have a 1 in 20 chance of a 20. And that's an automatic success. Uh, and usually it's an extraordinary success. A 20 is, you know, you try to hit something in the head and you take its head clean off. You try to pick a lock and you manage to remove the lock and take the lock with you, and then you can use it to lock something else up. A critical fail, on the other hand, is when you roll a 1. And a 1 is when things get interesting. Say you're going to a king, and the king has graciously granted you an audience, and you go up to the king and you say, Greetings, my great king. I grant you salutations and I wish you all the due respect and you try to bow deeply and you know you're really trying to be really smarmy and just lay it on thick and then I were to say well roll a charisma world to see how well you've charmed the king and you end up with a negative score then instead of saying greetings my fair king I wish to charm you you stand up in front of the king look him square in the eye and go eat shit eat shit king 
Eight six, you silly, silly eating shit king! Eight six! And that's just sort of the epitome of a critical miss. So what would you say to somebody um, who wants to play D&D but they've never, they know nothing about D&D? Ask questions. Find someone who plays D&D regularly or go to a game store. Chances are they'll let you look at the books, they'll talk to you about it. Just do it. Get a couple friends and say, Yo dog, I want to play D&D. And you should totally play. And then your friends will go, really? Isn't that like nerdy? And then you go, well, yeah, but awesome. Uh <laughs>《The more you pretend to be someone else, the more you learn about yourself.》Respect. <laughs> Mad respect. Anyone who's read fantasy novels, who's seen fantasy stories, at some point they say, boy, I wish I could do that. And you can't. I mean, you could do medieval reenactment. You could go out and learn how to train with a sword and spend years of your life for that one fleeting bit of, yes, I'm gonna... But, or you could just go and hang out with friends with some snacks and tell really cool stories. Stories that never would have been told otherwise. And you're there, and you're creating them. And that's just really cool.